Um, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, this is the Flying Circle. I do this every Thursday morning, usually later than this. It's 7 a.m. in California, 10 a.m. in New York City, where Apple is announcing something exciting uh, having to do with education. Uh, and so we've got an awesome panel. Uh, and this panel will be part of a shared circle that I'm going to post on my Google Plus stream. And you'll be able to uh, circle and continue to follow all of these brilliant people. One of my criteria, uh, the most important criteria for gathering together the circle is that people post really interesting things uh, in the area of their uh, expertise, in this case, which is uh, innovation and education. So um, uh, what we're going to be doing, live blabbing the live blogs. We're going to be reading live blogs, and then, and then our panel of esteemed experts will be talking about uh, what this means for education, for textbooks, or what it means for um, whoever is going to be affected by this announcement. So what I like to do uh, for starters is go around the room and ask uh, everyone to please introduce uh, yourself, um, what do you do for a living, etc. So why don't we start with you, Donna. Okay, hi, how are you? Thanks for inviting me. Um, Donna Murdoch, I'm the uh, Associate Director of Virtual Instruction at the Fox School of Business um, at Temple University outside of Philadelphia. I'm also a doctoral student in adult ed and, uh, and technology at Columbia University Teachers College, so I travel back and forth to New York a lot. I'm passionate about everything to do with educational technology. Uh, the disruption we're all part of right now, and excited to see what they have to say today, what Apple has to say. Wonderful. Okay, Laverne. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? I can. can Hi. Hello. I'm Laverne. Hi. I'm Laverne Lester Maringolo Thatch, and um, I own my own company called The Education Stream. And STREAM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Reading, Engineering, and Mathematics. Nice. Um, I can tell you that I was, I was, let's see, I was STEM before National Science Foundation realized they needed a STEM <laughs> program in the schools and university. Mm -hmm. So, but I said that I put an R in mine and call it, you know, for reading being very important to learning mathematics and science and being, you know, getting involved in engineering and technology. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a PhD in science and mathematics education focused on physics and engineering education. Wonderful. Okay, great. Uh, Pamela, why don't you go ahead? Uh, my name is Dr. Pamela Gay. I am an assistant research professor in the Center for STEM Education Research and Outreach at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. Um, which is basically a really long title that says I play online engaging people <laughs> informally in doing astronomy. Um, I okay. work with the CosmoQuest Citizen Science Project which gets people doing science in their spare time. Wonderful. And just a brief uh, note, um, the live, the event that we're going to be talking about today has already started and right now is the executive blather part where they just say nothing for about 10 minutes. So we're going to continue mm -hmm. introducing ourselves. Tim Calvin, why don't you go ahead? Hi guys, uh, I'm Tim Calvin. I'm a, <coughs> well, <coughs> I'm an English teacher here at Burlington High School just outside of Boston in Massachusetts. I'm also um, a instructional technology specialist here and I teach media production as well. Um, I've been involved in one of the largest iPad one-to-one -one rollouts in the country thus far. The uh, high school I work at with Pat Larkin, we're running about 1,100 student iPads uh, this year. Um, I've also been involved with uh, self-publishing textbooks now for sort of about six or seven years, I suppose. So, so that's you, sort of my angle on this. Sounds like you're probably pretty interested in this announcement. Yeah, actually, uh, mm -hmm. Apple came up to our school in preparation for all of this and, and interviewed me for about an hour and a half on film. So while I can't see any of the video that they're playing there, there's a possibility that I'm in some of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I actually invited a couple of people to this and said, I can't be on the Hangout because I will be at the event. So, uh, okay, Tim Lauer, why don't you go ahead? Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Tim Lauer. I'm the principal at Lewis Elementary School in Portland, Oregon. Um, we've got a very modest um, iPad uh, kind of uh, deployment. We're basically, uh, we got a grant last year, so our fourth and fifth graders, uh, it's, it's basically uh, two kids to a device, which isn't ideal, but uh, it's kind of a 
gift, so we can't really complain too much about that. Um, I'm really, I'll, some of my staff have been working with uh, EPUB uh, kind of publishing uh, of their own materials and such, and that's something that they're, they're excited about this uh, announcement today based on the rumors and such that there might be some kind of interesting publishing environment that uh, uh, will allow them and their students to kind of share their, their content and their materials. Awesome. Thanks for the advice. Thank you for joining us. And, and Rachel, why don't you go ahead? Sure. My name is Rachel Winty Cheney, and I am in Central Oregon. I am the CIO for the High Desert Education Service District. We have four re uh, districts in our region. And I spend my days with all different types of devices trying to find the best ways to match those with student needs. Um, currently, we use a lot of iPads in our special education programs. And we have iPads scattered throughout elementary school, middle schools, and high schools. We also are a pilot site for the Google Chromebooks and have uh, purchased additional Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. We have netbooks, we have laptops, we have nooks, and we have Kindles. So we're kind of uh, trying to figure out what the best match is for a lot of our students. Okay, and we're going to be, um, as I said, we're going to be live blabbing the live blogs. And if you're on this panel and, and joined us late, I just put a link to the list of live blog so you can pick the one you like the best. So as far as I can tell, uh, they've talked about how great the iPad is and how horrible uh, paper books are and um, bragged a little bit about how awesome Apple is. Um, and I, I assume they're going to start getting into some substance here. Uh, pretty it looks like they just released iBooks 2. It's the last thing I saw go by. Okay, great. Yes iBooks too. They haven't said anything about it as far as I can tell yet, but they said that it's coming. So, um. yeah, I, I see the same thing. Audrey Waters just said it on the higher ed blog. iBooks too. So one of, one of the points that they've been making is that while textbooks contain all this great content, all this great images, they're extremely heavy, they can't be easily updated, they aren't interactive, and what they're doing is they're setting the stage for why we need to transition, why we need to make this funding investment. Um, it's easy to imagine buying 30 books a year. For some reason, people can emotionally get behind spending $100 per book on 30 books or $300 per book on books. But with technology, suddenly it becomes frightening. We're letting the children have something where they might get onto the wilds of the internet. They might mm -hmm. break it. But the thing is, we're deteriorating their learning when we stick to these many hundred-year-old technologies. Just being able to search on somebody's name in an iPad book and then reach out and see videos on this person and so many other things, these portable technologies enable kids to learn the way they've been programmed to learn since they started playing with technology when they learned to talk. So it looks like um, they've announced uh, that the, the iBook 2 has a video built into the books. So, so they, these are interactive uh, books, um, which I think was one of the main things expected out of this announcement. Uh, and that right now they're doing a demonstration. So um, the, de the demo is being described by the uh, live bloggers. I mean, I guess the thing that I'm most excited about here is the potential for them to, to output a, uh, a new way of building these e-books. I mean, yeah. Right now, the easy way to build an e-pub is through pages, and it's lovely, but it's far from ideal, and it's definitely not a e-book specific uh, program. I, I'd really like to see them to put something out that's specific to e-book building to make that process easier for an average high school or, or average teacher in general. I actually got the impression that was what they were going to announce, but it'll be interesting to see. And also interesting what you were, uh, when you were just talking about the links going to video, I wonder if that's what they were talking about or whether they're going to have their own video component in the book that you don't have to leave the, you know, the actual book itself and go oh, out on the web. It's, it's Apple. It's going to be integrated. They're right. going to be doing that. Exactly. That's what I assume. So. And I was kind of spinning this up even more and wondering if we wouldn't get in, you know, as Kim number one said, it'd be nice if we had the tools on the creation side but also on the student side and the management side, uh, they could spin this up into a, a whole environment. So we're not talking about individual books. We're actually talking about a learning environment. And mm -hmm. material in those books can be accessed, linked, shared 
by teachers and students in, in groups and maybe using some type of iCloud communication piece. Uh, mm -hmm. You could do something like we are doing now within your learning management system plus curriculum plus iBooks on your iPad. So one of the things they're showing right now, one of the things they're demonstrating right now is that they're, they're manipulating uh, DNA on, on the page in the demo. And, and remember that when the iPad first came out, they had that, fan, somebody, uh, third party came out with this amazing chemistry, I think it was a chemistry yeah. app where you could look the at the molecules right. or whatever that was. Um, so it sounds like they have built that into iBooks, the ability to, not, it's not video, it's a 3D object that students can zoom in on and turn and, and, and so on. And now there's, um, I, I see a picture, I'm on the Macworld uh, live blog, and there's a picture showing the, 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 the interactive book. Biology. Okay. 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 Yeah, one of the things, sorry. That's okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, one of the things that, that uh, from what I was reading and I was hoping they will go towards is like the way the books are going to be built, the textbooks. With using the technology that the student has an input in what their textbook is going to look like, and the media, the media or medium that is relevant to how they learn and what they, you know, what they will find useful. For example, learning about the cell, you know, human body cell or plant cell or something like that. There's a child who's going to learn better by seeing a video. There's a child who will learn by seeing a one would learn it no matter what in a one-dimensional plane of just having the cell there in the different parts. So I really was open to see that m more input from the user, the students themselves, in the textbook, because we haven't had that. I don't think we have ever had that. Yeah. Where there was user input, the, the user being the student input. Yeah. That's and beautiful. on what their books will look like. Okay. And, so and no one of the. Go ahead. One of the things that they're talking about is that is going to be the second half of this presentation. Mm -hmm. And while they're currently gearing everything at publishers, one of the things that we've learned as educators is any tool that can be used by a publisher, if we just find the way to either get the open source version of that software or we just buy it for our school system, we can use those professional tools within our classrooms because, well, the average publisher and the average fifth grader are often capable of using the same software. So just as we've been able to take Microsoft Office, which was designed originally for professionals to give slideshows, we should be able to take all the same e-publishing tools that are being put out there for the publishers and bring them into our classrooms to create, imagine, term papers that are formatted as professional book. Okay, so they, they're, yeah, I mean, they're talking so, about... I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah they're talking about... Um, the, there's, the books have built-in glossary, so you touch a word and it gives you the definition of that word. Uh, now what's, what's interesting to me, um, again, I'm following the uh, higher ed, inside higher ed blo uh, blog here, and we're, we're starting, I didn't mention at the beginning, we're doing an iPad rollout as well in our business school, which I don't know how many of those have been done. Um, and what, what's exciting to us about it is the sharing, obviously, mm -hmm. and being able to even share in a study group and be able to share annotations or work together using it. So uh, I am interested in the building, but the sharing and the collaboration is the most important aspect to us probably. Yeah, I, yeah interestingly, um, up at our district, we were trying to get an initiative going to get multiple districts sharing all of our resources that we use for curriculum development and, and what we would normally think about putting in uh, textbooks and sharing those via a wiki. And Apple actually came up and facilitated some of that with us. The okay. idea of like, having teachers from multiple districts get together and then I would be able to steal stuff, well steal, borrow things from, uh, <laughs> from other teachers that I wanted in my specific textbook from my classroom. Uh, and so Apple seems sort of keen on that at the time and what I'm really looking for, I mean iBooks too is cool, but what I'm really looking for is the second half of this where we end up with, um, with hopefully I would hope tools both to create these things and collaborate on the creation of these. I, what I'd really like to do is step away from the um, I'd love to step away from the publishers entirely because I, I honestly think that I personally I can do a better job building a book from my classroom than someone who's not in my classroom. Now they're, they're no, now they're announcing uh, Lex has just announced that they um, uh, the digital textbook that they're talking about has exactly what you'd expect. It has a quiz and, and a summary and a quiz at the end, just like regular textbooks, except you actually take the test and get a result um, mm -hmm. at the end of the chapters. And as we jump back into that, uh, where they're doing the live feed, on The Verge, at uh, timestamp 714, there was a neat observation 
that uh, the indexing is so much cooler than a paper index. And yeah. on Google Plus not too long ago, Esther Wozicki said, she put a post up that I haven't had a chance to go back and reply to yet, saying that her students really prefer the paper textbooks. And I think there's certainly still a, a set and a mindset that we do prefer that until you get to that indexing point and that glossary point, like Mike mentioned, being able to pull that knowledge right now is where I start tipping into that electronic book side of the equation. And a lot of our students do also. Now they're talking about highlighting by swiping highlighting. the finger over text. This, yeah. I just saw that too on our, yeah. on our blog here. That That's exciting to me. I mean, and well, you s could do it in certain programs, but this is, this is good. And the well, addition it, of notes. You can add notes by touching oh, and notes to up. It, it looks like they've taken all the best aspects that were out there and combined them into one program. I, I've been using Goodreader for a number of years now to uh, go through and review papers, to go through and review even grant applications because it has these highlight, make notes, annotate, add pictures features. And one of the transformative things about this is you can share what you've done with someone else. So you can essentially create that annotation guide that has been built by an entire group of people who bring in different views on the same topic. Imagine using this not just with your students, but collecting a group of experts to review the same document where they're all adding annotations relevant to their particular field. It's like you get all the people doing color commentary in your side notes. So there, there looks like they're adding all the things you would expect. Well, I keep seeing uh, something like this, which includes flashcards. Looks like I love the flashcards. Yeah, that's that's very very cool. Uh, go ahead, uh, Laverne. As I'm, as I'm listening to all the comments and the um, and what everybody wants, it's still also adult and instructor instructor fo focus. We're not talking about the students and what they want and what they need and what will be efficient or effective for them in their learning. Because we've never provided any control to them as to what to do and we keep talking about education reform and what's going to change and what will make things different, but the, the students never have an input. This is all still adult-centered, adult-centered yeah. yeah. or instructor-centered or textbook, cent um, textbook builder-centered. The students are not getting involved here. And that's, that's my concern, and if we, I don't know, if we allow this to happen with the students are a part of the process and are saying, well, efficient, this would be efficient or effective for me if it looks like this or looks like that. So give them that control, because we're going to still be like, I said, like, what is it, the tail, what is it, the, do the, the tail yeah. wagging the dog or something yeah, like that, because yeah. we're not allowing something new or different to happen. Well, you know what they're not they're noting over here. Um, I I can't tell who said it, but again on on the higher ed blog that developing these books uh, and integrating all the images and videos it's going to be a major interesting permissions issue. Well, <laughs> and how do you get the rights and all that kind of stuff? In in the sciences, at least, we're in this fabulous position where any image, any data product that is produced through a federally funded project is in the public domain. So I know there's already several of us who've anticipated this coming and we have funding in my case from NASA to create iPad applications that are going to allow students to work with us to define what is it you need. We actually have a large grant that I processed the paperwork through yesterday where we're going to be working with kids in the East St. Louis which is an extremely poor, extremely minority um, majority, I guess, uh, community to sit down with the kids and say, how do we make this work for you? How do we make educational materials that talk, in our case, about astronomy that you want to consume in your spare time? Mm -hmm. So we're being provided the playground by Apple. And now it's up to us as the educators, as the people who actually understand kids to sit down with the kids and create the tools they're hungry for. So they just announced that Apple... It looks like we may be transitioning to maybe phase two. Right. Um, they, they just announced that uh, iBooks 2 is now available already in the App Store. It's I'm headed there now. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm pulling and, out mine as well. And they, and they, they also have a textbook, a new textbook category as well to give the... The one that's called No, K-N-O. Is that the one you're talking about? No, that's a diff that one's been there for a while. That's a whole... That's another company. Um, okay. Ah, they just, uh, they just announced a new app called iBooks Author. There we oh, go. There you go, Tim. About. There we go. Uh, thank God. <laughs> I'm still excited about turning annotations into flashcards. I'm still thinking that's pretty neat. 
Yeah. Well, you know, as Pamela said, um, we have uh, one of our teachers in our region, Mike Geisen, was National Teacher of the Year a couple of years ago. He's a science teacher, and he's one of those who would be an active part of the textbook adoption and then would sit the textbooks up on the shelf because he was an interactive teacher. And I think it he, his model addresses some of the concerns about the permissions and copyright. He's really building his own curriculum as he goes. So I can see iBooks author being a big part of you know, energetic and engaging teachers, one of their tools. Can, I, can yeah. I just point out something kind of interesting here for a second? Is that we're, we're all talking about uh, trying to make this student driven and student centered and all of that. And all of my students, all 1,100 of them, have I uh, have iPads already, which means mm -hmm. if I, I get them all iBooks author. They're all authors making their own textbooks. So, right. problem solved. <laughs> 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 on your, on your end, problem great. solved. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> So, and you know, Tim Lauer in Portland, I don't know if you ever take a peek at Lewis's uh, photo streams, he has some very creative, very artistic, uh, very smart students. I imagine, Tim, that you're pretty excited about them turning them loose as creators also. Oh yeah, that's, uh, like I said, that's something that I said earlier, something that my, my staff <laughs> is really looking forward to in terms of, you know, just being able to author and as we were speculating the, the sidebooks author, uh, that's what I'm really excited about to see how that works and um, also, um, you know, is there a cost of that tool, is it free, that kind of thing. Well, Apple's wait, wait. claiming that, that it looks, that it's a lot like iWorks and that it's a, a, a quote unquote rich WYSIWYG editor space. So that's exactly what you would want and what we would expect. Right. The, the screen cap they just put up looks gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. And what's awesome about this is, it, I, I know at least in the sciences, we're, we're constantly trying to get students to understand three-dimensional processes that change over time and there's all sorts of variables going in and out. And the way we do it is by getting them to do online interactives. Now we can drop all those online interactives into their textbook. And so suddenly we're bringing all the pieces together and there's no break in the workflow for the student. They don't have to suddenly set their textbook aside, type in a URL. It's right there. And there's no flipping back and forth between applications. By the way, it's right, right up there, books, under choose a category. It's so you found book, it. Book creator yeah. for iPad. It's right there on my iPad. It's, a, it's even better than that, though, because now, I mean, if you have kids that are able to tr produce their own content at school when they've got a Wi-Fi connection and you're worried about them going home where they don't have Wi-Fi, if they're outputting that as an e-book, uh, that's already on their iPad that's local yeah. to them, and now you're not worried yeah. about them not having Internet connectivity at home. That's excellent. Well, and, and as educators, imagine showing up to a professional development workshop, and, and this happens to me all the time. I'm talking to someone, and they're like, I found this great book. Well, now you can get it instantly. You can share instantly your annotations. And, and so this makes it easier for us as educators to stay two steps ahead of our students who are out there prowling for content as fast as we are. So yeah. it looks like they're talking about the uh, Word doc, uh, starting with a Word document. Um, and, and they're talking about how it works. What do you think about how this thing is working according to what they're announcing so far? Well, I mean, the, the basis of an EPUB is actually just an HTML document spliced with CSS and a JPEG for, an Im for a cover image. And if that's if this if what we're looking at here is an evolution of an EPUB, which is what I strongly suspect it is, um, then what they're basically doing is creating a way to do HTML markup uh, without knowing any HTML at all, and that just makes it easy for the rest yeah. of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually what a lot of people are suggesting over here. They're saying perhaps they'll partner with open education providers. In this case, they talk about MIT OpenCourseWare, but, you know, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Or if they're preceding the marketplace by developing existing open content books, mm -hmm. that might be, might, might happen. Yeah. So the, the one thing that's a bit concerning about this for, for people who have to deal um, with informal learners, which is what I do, is everything is geared specifically at the iPad, which is awesome and makes sense for Apple. But when you're dealing with normal EPUB software, it uh, doesn't really let you figure out where to place the graphics real well. It doesn't let you define page breaks because the second you start defining those things, you're now defining a document that only works on one device, only works on one aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. They're yeah, creating they're things all. formatted for the iPad, so you're locked into that aspect ratio and dynamic. I'm so not sure entirely that that's true because the, uh, the EPUB standard is an open standard. Uh, and so if these are in fact, and we don't know this, but if these are in fact building yeah. EPUBs of one form or another, then that is a cross-compatible 
uh, standard that you could use on other devices. So they just demonstrated the ability to drag and drop a uh, keynote presentation into the tool, and it just turns into, into textbook pages. It's beautiful. I mean, I guess we'll, we'll see soon enough, but it'll be interesting to see if, uh, you know, you're talking about the various uh, EPUB, you know, the various formats and such, and, and wonder if, yeah, it's optimized, say, for the iPad or, the, or um, an iOS device, but also I wonder if there's an option that it will degrade down to like, yeah. that lowest denominator. Yep. Audrey just posted that if you do your own JavaScripting and HTML, you can write your own interactive widgets, which that's a, a nice unexpected addition, I think. Yeah. I expected the drag and drop and the beauty. Um, yeah. And JavaScript means HTML5, so anything you can create, you can also turn into a mobile functional web website as well. Correct. Okay, what about the? You said it was a new um, app in the um, in the in the, um. I don't think it's out yet. In the store, yeah, the app store. I don't see it either. I, I, see I if you go to um, if you go to wait if you go to the app store. And where mm -hmm. did I just say it? Hang on. And it's right under under choose a category. Uh, the Verge is covering the. Uh, sorry to jump category. over you there. The Verge is covering the the glossary side. Remember the glossary side of the first part of the demo. Uh, the authoring kit has the iBooks author has the tool built in it. I imagine that you would do something yeah. like using a, a heading types or style guide like we yeah. do in documents and you create your own glossary. That's another nice, nice feature. Uh, I guess I got to go back and try code school again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think on the glossary side, Apple's made this pretty uh, much a one-click process for creating the glossary. The widgets, that will be a lot of fun with the coding. Well, and, and just think about this from the having to write an index of a book perspective. I, I don't know if any of you have ever worked on textbooks before, but trying to do an index and remember all the places you, discuss, you discussed John Henry Smith. It's a page. <laughs> and then every time you change your margins, he switches onto a different page. That's all yeah. fixed now. It's all hyperlinked now. So the, the authoring cool. tool enables you to look at it on your iPad. If your iPad is connected to a Mac and you're in the authoring tool on your Mac, you just click a button and it pops up on your iPad so you can see what it'll look like in real life. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. All right, I found books, but I'm not getting anything directly just a book. Yeah, well, I'm not the getting top right one, here. the very top choice, if you don't, don't click on books, but the very top Choice as book creator for iPad. Yeah, I'm going to jump in it. again. Barbara Fister. No, that's, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, that's I was just thinking it. that was it. No. I didn't even go there. Yep, that's not it. But oh. You spent four dollars. Yep. <laughs> no, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. I hey, uh, it. Barbara I Fister. <laughs> Barbara Fister on the uh, higher ed live blogging, the curmudgeon. Um, I know. I keep on her too. The, he does call out the issue of needing to work with the copyright regime so that we don't develop great textbooks that can't be released because the permissions are too tricky or expensive. Yeah. That was a nice exactly. bump for that issue. Definitely. Yeah. There's some really good synopsises out there of the copyright laws and all the things we need to worry about. And I'd, I'd strongly encourage anyone out there thinking about doing any of this to actually give yourself a month to sit down and read through all the copyright laws. It's, it's kind of ama um, amazing how simply the difference between uh, discussing something in your classroom and emailing out a homework assignment, you can break copyright law. Uh, I'm hmm. going, I apologize for keep jumping in, but there's some great commentary going on on the live blogging. Rick at CNET says, I also worry about the world now becoming filled to the sky with easy to make but bad books, and I think that's a very valid concern. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and that wasn't already books. happening. Right, exactly, and that's no. true. And you don't have to be a, a, a lay person to create a bad book. We have a lot of those coming from the, yes. the textbook publishing world already. <laughs> yeah, leave the bad books to us professionals. That's right. Oh, oh, it's great. <laughs> In five minutes, we created an ebook and deployed it to the iPad. I hope you find it as, inspi as inspiring and empowering as we do. There we Permission? go. It's free. Sorry. It's yeah. free. It's free. It's free. Got the slide. Excellent. So, so the, now, now, wait a minute. Does this does this mean that 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 
a homework assignment is go create a, an iBook? Yes. Oh, Mike, you need to come yes. teach in our region. I think it's already been an assignment, <laughs> yeah, except wow. not an iBook, but other kinds of creative books. Yeah. Yeah. So but if you say it's available, but they're lying. No, it's not. It might be. Not there <laughs> now I guess not. I apologize. Well, Maybe they, as soon as they finish. A lot of they, times yeah. they wait a few minutes and then. They, they said it's available today, so they have today. a little time. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. They still have. But uh, uh, hours Mike or so. was Mike was okay. Mike was saying about you know the homework assignment is go create an iBook, but don't we run into the copyright issues there again too? as to what they're going to bring or what they're going to produce. Well, Laverne, I think that's a great create. opportunity to talk about Creative Commons, yes. to talk about public mm -hmm. domain materials, to talk about, mm -hmm. um, I think it was Pamela earlier, to talk about our government, I mean, the National Archives, NASA, yeah. the Whoa. Library of Congress, bucks. there's great content. They're saying that the high school textbooks are $15 or less. Holy oh mackerel. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, that helps a lot. <laughs> Wait, well, this also yeah. explains why someone just said we haven't heard the word shareable or reusable yet. Mm -hmm. Yet. Hey, this is Apple. They're disposable, <laughs> not shareable. Disposable. Okay. And Audrey, okay, just, okay. Audrey just blogged that students get their own copy. Their own copy. So I want to yeah, see the clarity on that. Hmm. But so, so guys, the other part of this is like we've been uh, we've been self publishing up here for for six or seven years now, right. and uh, we we do them cheap enough that we can give them to the students every year, so the kids can write in them. So think of very much of the analog version of what Apple's talking about here, right. and uh, the fifteen dollar thing is cool, but I just want the tool so I can build it myself and hand it to the kids digitally for free. Yeah. Uh, that's that that means it has other than other than staff time, it means it has no cost to me on my end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, and the mm -hmm. other place that this becomes amazingly relevant is where you're looking at fields that are undergoing rapid change. Um, History is pretty good about staying stable, but things like astronomy mm -hmm. and chemistry, we're redefining our universe on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And it, I know every textbook written before 1998 in astronomy needs to be thrown out. And now we don't have to feel bad about the $350 price tag that might have been attached to that hardcover but book. In, in totalitarian dictatorships, history itself is always changing, too. So that's very helpful for North Korea and so on. <laughs> <laughs> well, in higher ed, the students are buying these books themselves. It's mm -hmm. not even, I mean, bad enough the district is, but, or the school is, rather. But these are students who are buying these, you know, $150, $200 mm -hmm. books. So this would be... Well, there's, there's actually an exception to that that's going to be fascinating to see how it works. There's universities like my own that actually have textbook rental programs where the faculty agree mm -hmm. we're going to use the same textbook for three years and students rent the books for a much lower cost. So how does textbook rental play into the iPad generation? They just well, announced I, that 90% of the, 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 the three companies that make 90% of the textbooks look in the at that. Yeah, are Pierce, on board yeah, and Pierce. are announcing applications, but really ultimately, I mean, the thing that they have to realize is that this is all about disintermediation. This is all yeah. about obsoleting these companies to a certain extent, and they're just like, you know, um, you know, uh, happy with their new insect overlords, you know, type of deal. Well, I think what, what Tim mentioned, you know, in terms of his district doing self-publishing of books, and we've done a bit of that too, um, that I think, like you say, is the exciting part. Uh, of this is basically you're, you're providing a tool that's going to make that relatively easy for, for teachers who have content knowledge, yeah. uh, but basically don't have maybe the technology uh, background to do that as, as it has been done in the past. So the the the, uh, the the textbooks are available now in the in the iBooks bookstore. Now, what, what's awesome about this is also think about all the ways that this <laughs> makes it easy for us to adapt our, our materials for students who are either underachieving or overachieving. Suddenly, right. we can simply drop in the more advanced material. Suddenly, we can work on making sure there's extra glossary terms or extra, extra explanatory materials. We can yes, that was one customize that everything. Definitely, yeah, that was one of the things that was, I found very interesting that with the underachiever and overachiever, and both of them being in the same classroom. Yeah. And, if, and we can't just have one set textbook that, and the and they underachiever, that's why we keep losing them. Because yeah. if the textbook yeah. cannot be read by them, it can be read right. by maybe 5% right. of them in the classroom. That's true. And, and the highest dropout rate. 
Sorry, go ahead. The highest dropout rate by percentage is in, in the uh, gifted and talented students who get bored. Well, now they can keep themselves busy and occupied and learn more and more and more and fate their own needs. Now, Kurt, yeah, Moreno, yes. Kurt Moreno in the comments uh, of, of this uh, post uh, of the live uh, blab um, is asking why people are concerned about there being too full of books and says that it isn't a problem. Is that... Uh, what do you think about that? Too full of books? What do you mean by too full of Well, we books? were saying I, I, earlier that this is all oh, great. Now everybody's going to make textbooks. There's going to be too oh, many Oh, okay. Books. Yes, yes, I see. Um, okay. uh, well, you know, there, there is that worry that when we look at the amount of content that we're creating with the Internet, period, you know, that daily we're creating more than we've uh, created in the written history of man so far. But, I, you know, I say bring it on. Yeah, th this is yeah. going to end up creating two problems that we actually are going to have to deal with head on. One is research shows that if you present someone with too many options, they refuse to make a decision. So the cereal aisle with too many boxes, you walk away and you buy oatmeal. The paradox of choice. But isn't, exactly. that, where yeah, but isn't that where our teachers come in? Aren't they, right. aren't they really becoming the Sherpas yeah. then for helping they are make the sh these choices? We had that and Sherpa comment this week. That's mm -hmm. right. And, 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 and we'll, we'll be I'm sorry, so so the, the concern there is, is even the teachers being overwhelmed by choice. And the second problem is um, all those times where, you, where a student has to say, well, in my high school we used um, such and such a book for algebra, and instantly the professor knows what the student does or doesn't know. Yeah. Right now we're in a paradigm of only having three or four major books for each field. And so you can know what your student knows based on the textbook. That's well, no longer going to be possible. I'm going to play possible. devil's advocate on that. And one of, the, one of the live blogging pieces that we didn't get a touch on earlier was, um, I think it was CNET who uh, made, Bridget Carey made a really good observation that, you know, this closes that immediate feedback loop on some of these built-in assessments in these iBooks that, you know, as a teacher you can get that immediate feedback from your students. And more importantly, I think it circles back the immediate feedback to the students themselves on what they know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a kind of one of those adult problems. We have to shift our thinking about what we know about what our students know. Um, it's, so I was actually saying something different. So further down oh, the line, okay. you're taking trigonometry. And the teacher says, OK, you're struggling with this. What math book did you use to learn algebra? And, and so that ability to understand what a student took from a past teacher based on their textbook is gone. Is gone. So for well, instance, I, then I see that I see that as something positive. Because yeah, that's too many what times the teachers have so much knowledge about the few that the few books that are there that they get locked into that being the only way to approach a situation right. and help that child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they and I'm glad when a teacher can say, I don't know. Let's try to figure that out together. That's Should actually what they're announcing right now is, is that yeah. they, they're, they're talking about the obsolescence and uh, sort of the rigid, rigidity of paper textbooks. And, and presumably, they're, they're going to be talking about how they can be flexible and constantly updated. Well, yeah. you know, I've, se I've seen the um, sort of the change over the past few years from textbooks to PDFs. Of, of whatever the relevant current, you know, in higher ed, whatever's current because of this. Because by the time a book is published, it's over in a lot of, you know, it, it's different yeah. in lower schools, but higher. So I, I, I can see now coming back to a platform if everybody buys into this concept. Um, you know, there's, they're have. talking about just that right now as they're starting to, you know, Audrey and uh, on CNET, um, Scott Stein, they're starting to say, you know, how are we actually, what's this purchasing model going to look like? There were some questions earlier about does this shift our funding model on textbook purchasing to students rather than school districts? Um, I think that's going to be a, a big question. And there's also some speculation that, you know, maybe Amazon is in a better position to do something like this because of the price pressure that they've already applied to their own products, the Kindle and their textbooks. Well, and, and one thing that's not being addressed is the, is the safety issues. No one has ever mugged somebody for their physics book. I wish that happened. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, and, and this is one of the concerns we're working with. My, my research center is, is working with a charter school in East St. Louis, and we've bought all the kids' iPads, but we can't let the kids take them home because it mm -hmm. creates too much of a safety hazard. Hey, and, guys, and I, I hate to do this. I'm sorry. I, I hate to do this. I have to step out because I have to go give a midterm.
room to some freshmen that are standing outside my room now. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's been okay. a lot of fun. Thank you very much for having me, okay? All right. Thank Bye. You. Thank you nice to meet you, Jim. So, See you okay. later. So a quick note from the live blogs. Um, the uh, Reuters is saying that they're dem demonstrating some books, and they are, quote, jaw-dropping, unquote. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's a good really? sign. Really? That is a great sign. Yeah. So, so how do we prevent this technology from increasing the digital divide when we're in situations where some students just aren't in a safety position to carry home iPads? Well, I think that's our role as, as schools and as educators on the ground. Tim Lauer would, you know, sitting here with us. I, I think we struggle with these issues every day. We struggle with uh, bandwidth at home. I know for these iBooks, you know, exactly. bandwidth maybe is off the table, but safety's there, economic resources. I think that the digital divide looks a little different um, right now, but we're still talking about struggling with that divide around having a parent at home at the kitchen table yeah. involved in that mm -hmm. student's education. And that's the piece that we work on every day, and Tim can speak to that better than I can. Yeah, the, uh, we've got a high school similar to the school in St. Louis uh, that is going to do an iPad one-to-one. Uh, -one. Uh, it's probably one of the highest poverty school in Portland. Um, and that's a big concern is, is basically, you know, you've got this $500 device in your backpack and how are you going to keep uh, kids safe? And uh, not to mention the fact that if you have devices regularly stolen, uh, it really interrupts your lesson planning. Yeah. In terms of, you know, I mean, you're relying on this tool, and it's not there. Um, I don't have an answer for that, but I think it's something that um, you know we look at, and I think also you know, the the price point of these things keeps coming down. I mean, with with the Kindle Fire and such, uh, so we might get to the point where um, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really worry about it as much as I did when it was first introduced. But I I don't have an easy answer for that. Well, I think that you talked about the price coming down. I, I'm predicting that this year Apple will announce a, a very cheap iPad, possibly a 7-inch iPad, and probably under 250 I've actually been thinking the same thing. Those are the rumors. But also, yeah. they really need to bring the price point down with that fire out there, um, at, mm -hmm. least for this, at least for a book, although this is probably their way of combating that you know, here's what we can do because it, it's saying it's not going to be available on Kindle. It's not like on my iPad I have a Kindle app. There's no vice versa. If you use the Fire and the iPad side by side, though, the authoring ability on the Fire just isn't as good. Right. And yeah, so when you factor in, we want them to be creators as much as right. consumers. Absolutely. That, that whole creation, you can understand why it doubles the price point. Oh, it does. Oh, it's well worth it. I, in a minute, I agree. Mm -hmm. But I can still see... If cost is an issue and you're just talking yeah. about books and that's the purpose, not creation, especially again right. in higher ed where they're not maybe doing that. Although I, I'm, I'm hoping to encourage more creative projects like that even at, at this level. There's more and more apps to be able to do that. But we'll Anything that works at high school works in higher ed and you know we don't stop so. learning creatively all because we're over 18. You know, we you learn know, a lot. On the verge, on the verge they... Uh, they Posted that this <laughs> is that I did. <laughs> <laughs> On the verge, they've posted that this is going to change the landscape of education. And I think to that point of price points and how we pay for things. And again, as in my role, this is one of the things I worry about. A hundred. 20, 30 years ago, school districts had to figure out how to make the jump from just the teacher in the classroom to actually buying McGuffey's readers and primers and um, how to buy these books that were fragile at the time. The pages could yeah. rip. You know, they could be taken home and lost. They could be uh, burnt. They could be, you know, left out in the rain. These are those same issues, you know, our uh, turn of the century school districts were facing as they moved to paper textbooks. I'm confident that we'll find out, find ways to do it in the move to digital textbooks. Yeah. Yeah, but also, too, that goes back to the idea of what about the students who do not have the resources at home and, you know, no one will steal your physics textbook, but they may want to steal your iPad. I mean, yeah, certain exactly. resources in certain, in some areas, you have to keep at the school because the teacher being there is where the child will learn. Taking it home, I mean, I've had, I had issues in, when I taught in New York where the students took the textbooks home and they brought it back to me and I could tell it was never open. Sometimes some of them looked like they were used to prop up a bed or something because there was a big dent in the book. They never <laughs> opened it. So I always kept a set of schoolware 
I know when they're there, I know what would happen in teaching and learning, so do, do the most that you can and the best that you can with them in that situation and not be so concerned about what is taken home and what is, what is monitored or what is done by the parent. Sometimes you, have to, sometimes you have to distance yourself or subtract that type of interaction if you want to keep a positive flow in the classroom and make sure that your students learn. Mm -hmm. Now they're well, talking about that. Yes, that yes. That I choose player. you, right. Yeah. Okay. I choose you. This is exciting. Um, of which I'm a huge fan. I don't know if you... Oh, yes. It's a gorgeous experience. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Lots of great research resources and material in there. It took so and long for like people to realize it was there. Sounds like we're transitioning to that higher ed element that Pamela and right. Donna were just talking about. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to help teachers reinvent curriculum. My tunes, you. Oh. Interesting. Somebody's coming in. Liz Green. All righty. Oh, and there's Liz. the uh, pendulum experience. Hey, Liz, can you introduce yourself? Sorry, I uh, just woke up, so my head's a little like, wow, <laughs> the internet, <Are> <laughs> it's back. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I am, I'm just a student. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to USC in Southern California, and I'm a, a communication major with, I guess, an emphasis in, like, tech stuff as, as a hobby. <laughs> Programming. Oh. So, yes, did I... <laughs> I'm looking Welcome at the news right now. So this we is are, really interesting. We want to have teachers do a lot more full online courses. This is really interesting to me. They're transforming professional development as well. So we are we are looking at the live uh, blog uh, blogs, Liz, and I put the link in the in the in the chat uh, section. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now they're talking about iTunes U and about transforming that from just essentially podcasts to a more complete interactive curriculum oriented uh, service. You know, I think this means that they, they've hit on those three layers that we started with at the beginning of this Hangout, Mike. Remember, Tim was, we, we started out with uh, a couple people saying they wanted the books. Tim saying, the books are fine, but I want that authorship layer, and I think I may have jumped in at that point, and I said, I want that environment layer that we're mm -hmm. linking everything together, not just individual nodes and books. Yeah. Um, I, this is an exciting day. It's, we've got some things to figure out in education over the next few years. So uh, now, now it, iTunes apparently see, is an iPad app. iPad That's app. And, it, and yeah. it talks about the credentialing. Someone's uh, commenting on the implications to the credentialing function, you know, the whole... That's Barbara uh, again. Yep, so Barbara they, has those good concerns. She has really good realistic mm -hmm. today concerns. Yes. The badges and everything. MITx on the iPad, exactly. Who knows? <laughs> That's great. And you know, when we were talking about the pricing model on uh, CNET, Chris said college is really where this could thrive because suddenly that that iPad at five hundred dollars plus fifteen dollars per textbook—that's less than a semester's purchase of books yeah. for a lot of students. Easily. The only issue here is if it is iPad exclusive, and I mean it's Apple. Mm, you know, I you, think can that's you, what Apple you, wants. <laughs> I mean, can you keep the entire education world in a little Apple bubble? I don't know that you can do well, that. Well, you, you've got to give yeah. props for creating a model that does bring people into their products. It it yes. really is a bit of genius. It's and they're going to push though. the other creators and the other companies to uh, to meet them on these uh, the accessibility and the, and the beauty and the ease of some of these tools. Uh, there's, so a, there's benefits, but it's... Right, yeah. right now they're talking about how you're listening to a lecture and the professor says, okay, now open your books. <laughs> and that's a link. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, is, well, and they push it out. Right <laughs> yep, and there are posts. The Verge has a great shot of the, the post page and kind of the introduction to the book, but is noting that the uh, yeah. teacher can post messages <laughs> I'm oh, sure is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, I, I'm not seeing that feed. I'm going to go find it. Think, think about the small things this transforms. Right now, many of us in the classroom are using what are called clickers, which is where we ask the students a multiple choice question. They have what looks like a remote control. They respond uh. back to us. We can now embed all of that in their iPad so that they're not using this crazy device that they can't believe they had to spend 60 bucks on. And, and it's all right there where they can be working through activities at their own pace, giving us feedback in real time, and we can react in the moment in the classroom to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Eric Stoller on the, the Higher Ed Live blog, um, he's a little naysayer here. He said, did Apple secretly buy Blackboard? This is looking very, it's old school uh -huh. LMS to him. Hmm. I have to know Everybody, that. I'm and then Audrey, Audrey, yep, Audrey <laughs> chimed in that really maybe it's an Apple versus Blackboard moment. Uh -huh. so well, if, if it's Apple versus Blackboard then mm -hmm. Apple's definitely going to win because every yeah. teacher yeah. I've ever had at school that uses Blackboard hate. That, that has hate. to says they absolutely hate. Do you still have it? Do you yep. still have Blackboard there? I do. I, I still have to use it for certain classes. And certain classes. Every, what it, everybody hates it. <laughs> it's interesting. Well, yeah. and there's entire universities that, that their entire academic system yeah. pivots uh, around Blackboard. Yeah, so it's oh going to well. be interesting <laughs> to see <laughs> yeah. how, how do universities bridge between the two when we've bought into this extremely expensive licensing infrastructure. Well, mm -hmm. I, that makes me think in terms of the individual instructors just kind of you know, being free agents on their own with this and yeah. saying, I'm just going to bypass the university's uh, back end on that. So um, Blackboard is not any better now they've integrated Illuminate um, because they bought Illuminate last year. They did. Uh, Blackboard has gotten a lot better, but we actually use other web conferencing tools. We don't use what's, I mean, Illuminate, I always actually used to like Illuminate, but it still has more of the feel of, of a webinar format versus an interactive, although it does have interactivity to it. It's not, it's not WebEx. It's not Connect. It's not anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's okay. We, it's but gotten better. It's gotten <laughs> way better. I don't know if you ever saw it. Um, I've used it. I, used, I, I used Illuminate for a few years. Yeah. You know, The Verge mm -hmm. is kind. Of, the Verge is jumping in on this idea that Eric over at the Higher Ed uh, blog was commenting on. Um, it's the comment at 7:51 was it just doesn't feel right. What's interesting is that the first lecture they showed was exciting. It was in a classroom full of people. There's energy. Um, it's hard to capture that. Then when you transition to one person standing in front of the camera, yep. I think that's an interesting observation. It's like watching Congress on C-SPAN. Yes. <laughs> well, there's another major issue here is the education curve of the educators. Yeah. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Might, exactly. Because, might, because I'm looking at this chemistry, and it was a physics lecture before that they have screenshots of. And even though they have it and they try to say it's dynamic, it doesn't look dynamic in what they're showing us. It looks like the same. It's just a textbook on the screen. And I'm not seeing it. And that's what I want to see science be more dynamic in how it's taught and, and what is expected. And right now I don't see it. And maybe that's and what falls back on us as the educators and the, the possible creators of these is mm -hmm. that JavaScript okay. and HTML5 mm -hmm creating those dynamic manipulative widgets and interactive pieces so we're not just looking at text on a page. Although yeah, I have to exactly. say in higher ed you're going to have um, you're going to have people a lot more comfortable, the educators a lot more comfortable with something that looks and feels like something they're used to and uh, whereas if you made it a little too jazzy they wouldn't take to it too easily. So they're saying that uh, they're saying that a pilot program included MIT, Duke, Yale and Stanford uh, and I think a couple others that, that are not mentioned. Uh, and so they've already created the new iTunes U content that presumably will be available. I mean, they'll probably have the AI course and things like that, I would assume. And now they're talking about K through 12 with iTunes U, I guess. Yes, there oh. is. Yeah, K, K, K through 12 is up. Oh, is K-12 doing that? That's interesting. Wait, K-12 does have iTunes that? University channels. Um, uh, most of K-12 is doing it at the state level, so by state, so Texas or Oregon or Indiana, Pennsylvania, whatever mm -hmm. the state is. Um, it's usually the Department of Education working with Apple on those K-12U mm -hmm. sites. Interesting. You How know, about that? Back to that idea about you know the educators you know wanted to see wanted to see it on the screen but seeing it in the old format. Unfortunately, we have too many um, too many educators that are not willing to move forward in in what is available and how it can be used. And unfortunately, may sound harsh until they all die out, we are going to be stuck. Don't no. actually, I have to tell you, I, I I don't necessarily think it's a function of age. No, I've, I've gave up no. on that a long time ago. It's just some people are more 
adaptive That's with innovation. Absolutely I, true. I guess that is true too because I've, I've, as long as I've been in education, I've always gone with the flow of what's new and carried into the classroom and never wanted to stop and, you know, never wanted to stop learning the new things and providing the new things to students. So I guess it's, it's maybe true some for students. Like yeah. Right. Mindset. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. What's your? I'm sorry. I missed your name. The student. That's Liz. Liz. Hi. You are it's so absolutely true. true for students too. That's I know. True. Half of my class is like really into the new tech stuff, and another half of my class still doesn't know how to use Microsoft Word and doesn't know right. how to like. They're fine you on know, Facebook, search, though. They're fine well, on Facebook. They are, they are <laughs> what's, what's really interesting is when you start comparing by major. Um, I, I have the fortune or misfortune of teaching both science fundamentals for elementary ed pre-service teachers and calculus-based physics for engineers. Mm. Same age level of students. And the level of technology embraced by these two different students, even comparing construction engineers to elementary ed majors, the, the elementary ed majors, they want to play with humans. They don't want to play with avatars. And this is what drives us to go into the fields we go in, but we somehow have to step past our natural inclinations and, and find ways to make the new tech um, work for us. And this is where things like pen casting, in, instead of getting someone to type out all their math, embed in a pen cast of a derivation. Things like that are going to allow us to bridge our comfort zones, I think, a little bit easier. OK, I guess I'm going to jump in. John, John at CNET iBooks to it, or iBooks author is yeah. now on the Mac App Store. I'm gonna I'm gonna paste that link on the on the yeah. public comments of this. Um, okay, great, thanks, Mike. This thing. Let's Good. get it. And okay. well, I guess that's that true. I have to jump out to get to my eight o'clock meeting, Mike. I have really appreciated this this morning. Yeah. Thank thanks you for everyone. joining. Nice yeah. to meet you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Nice have a great day. Too. You Bye. too. Yeah, I was just okay, gonna mention. Okay, going mention back it. to that. Going back to that age thing and also to majors, I guess maybe I'm, I'm so familiar and comfortable with the um, technology because I was an engineer who became a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe that helps. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't think I, about that. <laughs> I still think that there's, that. there's, there's, there's still. A, a gap, right, the generation gap in, in mm -hmm. being comfortable with, with computers and stuff, but I, I think it's absolutely false. I mean, thank you. The, the I gap totally is, agree. Totally the gap is your interests and okay, your background. Okay, so the, the, the event has actually ended. Uh, and so that, that was a, exactly one, well, almost one, less than an hour. That was uh, an impressive uh, thing. So, um, so what, what do we think about what they announced today? Uh, I mean, obviously, we don't have the details. We won't know if it's great or not unless we use it. But what do you think? I'm still on. Liz, did you see the part with the flashcards? What do you think of that as a student, being able to highlight your books? If, if theoretically, the book that you were using was on there, would you No, would I you didn't get that? to hear about that. I missed that part. They were so talking they're, about they're highlighting and annotating and then making flashcards out of, of what you've annotated. Well, yeah, that's nice. Um, oh, you know, it does excite you, huh? <laughs> I, I'm thinking this whole thing is a little bit overhyped, personally. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't sound like anything too new to me, because um, already in the majority of the classes I'm in right now, since most of the teachers I know hate Blackboard so much, and they understand that books cost so much, they usually try to focus most of the readings on um, like in online articles. They just send us links. you know, And mm -hmm. we all have computers or laptops. Some of us do have iPads, and we choose to read it you, you know, using a web browser or something and use whatever platform we like and it works perfectly, you know? And we don't have to buy textbooks for maybe 75% of my classes now. So, so the, the one thing where I'm, the, the one thing where I think this might have a slight edge um, is I know the probability when you open a web browser that you're going to get distracted by your home page to not go where you were intending to go is quite huge. That's and true. this bypasses that need to be tempted and streamlines your ability to focus on what you're doing. Although the iPad can be distracting too, right? I mean, you can play That's Angry true. Birds on it. <laughs> really? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Never played that before. Uh, it, it, for me, the big advantage in all of this is streamlining the workflow. Mm -hmm. Every time someone says, OK, you now need to go to such and such, it's like, oh, dang. Yeah. But if it's all right there, and I don't have to leave what I'm doing, I don't have to figure out some new, OK, I need to open this, click that, type this, mm -hmm. it's all streamlined in one place. And that's just going to remove so many distractions. 
Yeah. I, I do think a lot of times we as pundits or, or evaluators or whatever do eat a little bit of our own dog food. I think Liz is a refreshing real real life look at what actually yeah. students do and use and I know I have teenagers as well and I agree with everything she's saying plus I'm a student. Well, but but the, the looking at the larger picture, I mean the, one of the reasons why here's a link works really well with today's college students is because that's how today's college students started out 10 that's years true. ago when they were 13 using the internet yeah. they were clicking around on the web that's right what's interesting about this announcement I mean what what Apple does more than invention is they tweak and perfect and integrate things that have been around technologies that have been around and then they mainstream it that's yeah. the thing that they do better than anyone else video conferencing yeah. has been around forever and then they then then they come out with FaceTime. That's a bad example, actually, because people don't use FaceTime. But they, they mainstream a lot of technologies like this. And so what's going to happen is they're playing a long game here, and they're going to get middle school students and high school students and middle school faculty and high school faculty using this technology. And then when those students are in university, they're not going to be so amenable to here's a link, there's a link. They're gonna they're they're gonna be wanting to use this or something like this. Yeah, I, I agree with that. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. I was gonna say um, I'm gonna have to go over here in a few minutes too because the kids are coming in. But um, to me, the exciting thing today is is the the creation aspect of this is, is basically putting these tools in the hands of people and hands of teachers and students. Um, as we were talking, folks said the you know, the uh, iBooks 2 is out, and I ta I've taken a look at some of this stuff, and you can pull off a couple samples, and I'm really excited to play with it. Um, but also, I want to thank you guys for the opportunity to talk with you today. I really enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Thank you very much. Um, thanks a lot, and um, I'm actually going to um, close this because normally I like to keep this to half an hour, um, unless any of you have a final brief thought. No, okay. Does anyone homeschool? Does anyone do homeschool the children? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, this is a flying circle. I do this every Thursday. Uh, again, my name is Mike Elgin, and this has been my what I'm calling my Orbit High School Faculty uh, uh, Circle. And I'll be sharing this circle with everybody uh, on my stream, so you can follow these folks on Google+. Plus. My criteria is that everybody here posts really interesting comments. I'm, the, the, the ultimate product of this, besides this video, is the circle and so I, I really want everybody to circle the shared circle when I post it because this is an awesome group of people and if you care about education or care about publishing this you want you're going to want to follow all these people so um, so I'd like to thank uh, all of the remaining survivors for joining me uh, all, the, all the women I guess are still around <laughs> thanks Mike so thank you for joining me. appreciate thank it so thanks for having me all thank right you. thanks again Bye. thank you all for watching bye-bye